a good morning, good morning. I am just about ready to go. I got about an hour to go and I will be meeting up with a very, very special friend of mine. But just take a look outside of here, you know? Just have a look at that. That's the white stuff that we got overnight. Look at that uh, amount that I got on my hood. Yeah. Well, that's what I was telling you guys yesterday evening about. That's what they were calling for. So I guess we did get what they said we were supposed to get. So, but anyways, let's get going. Let's get over there to the truck stop. And we will meet up with a very special friend. Here we go. I am just entering the Petro truck stop right now. Yep. Let's go see if our friend is going to show up over here somewhere. Yeah. We'll have to find out if he makes it up here. He said he will. He's probably going to come here with a little pickup truck, but uh, other than that, yeah, we'll see if he makes it. Anyways, we'll wait for him. Well, here we go. I do believe it. Hey. We're my friend hey you look taller on video i am eh? <laughs> yeah see that seat right there we saw his laptop right there on the table yeah this is really it's super super clean yeah holy cow this is so nice and let's see there's his uh there's his uh dash cam dash cam <laughs> There's RJ. Yep, there yeah. he is. There's the other, that's your Garmin, right? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. my Garmin, yeah. Yeah, this is so cool, man. This <laughs> is like, really. Now, when we're watching you, sometimes you got your camera. It, it seems I got like it right, right here. here. Yeah. Okay, you got it right there. Yeah, I got it right up there. Yeah, yeah. looking at you. Yeah, and, and then uh, I got another clip right here. And that's the one that, now is that, that's the one that looked yeah. at you too. Yeah, yeah. And then when you're... And then I'm recording forward, I got it on here. You got it right there. Yeah. This is a nice, clean truck. I'm so ashamed. <laughs> I got my feet as close oh, to the Oh, there door. is a towel on the edge there if you want to. Is there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I usually try and keep a towel there just in case somebody <laughs> comes yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a I'm little dirty put, already. That's but okay. That's what it's designed for, right? <laughs> yeah. We don't want to mess up the truck, definitely. Yeah. See, even... Rudy takes off his shoes before he comes in. Oh, look at that. Avalanche, <laughs> avalanche. Huh? Oh, yeah. it is clean. Yeah. My goodness. Well, now, I sleep up there, you yep, know. Yep, he's got a double bunk. He sleeps up there so he can keep his table on. Yeah. I like that. I like that idea, the table. Yeah, and, and the table you can actually fold down and make that into a bed too, into right? Into a bed. Yeah, like the, uh, the that pillows makes, that you got up there. That makes a nice place to sit though if you just Oh, yeah. Uh, like that's eat. where yeah that's where I usually sit that way I can do my paperwork on there and I can you know I cook something I I got a stove up here that that you guys probably seen a few times where I cook cook where a dinner and cook his dinner <laughs> that's yeah. a little dusty now but you yeah. know cook my dinner with <laughs> this is really nice yeah got oh you know God. lots of room in here you can easily oh, stand in here and <laughs> I, I, I know the guy from the UK, he was uh, wanting a tour of my truck, so he's going to get it now, right? <laughs> he's going to get it now, yes. Yes, and it's got a nice big fridge. It's all uh, all matched up, so it looks nice, you know. Look at the big fridge. Oh, you do? That's yeah. like a, a motel size. Yeah, right? it's got a freezing. A freezer? Yeah, everything. Yeah. And that does a good job freezing. Oh, yeah, as you can see, I mean, he even got all ice in there, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. and it's, it's only you know it's only turned on to three yet and it can go up to five <laughs> you could probably uh keep ice cream in there oh yeah definitely yeah. i mean everything is frozen I, I if i turn it up too high i have to be careful i don't freeze my milk in the bottom <laughs> this is if, if anybody out there thinks he lives man this truck i trust me this <laughs> his truck is magnet man it is really really super clean. yeah yeah holy cow yeah. Now, do you ever, like, well, I know your wife has went with you. Yeah. So we yeah. got some video feed on that. Yeah. Um, you ever take your kids with you out here on the road? Uh, I did take my son that one time, yeah. yeah. But my daughter, it, it's she's like handicapped, so I can't really. Can't, yeah, yeah, yeah that's I can't really take her. 
That's yeah, understandable. But anyway, so I think we'll go inside and have breakfast, right? Well, here we are at the uh, Petro here inside the truck stop. We're uh, fixing to have some nice breakfast here with the old mighty trucker Larry. Hey. <laughs> yeah, so we'll, we'll get breakfast done. Well, we just had a, ourselves a beautiful breakfast up here. We are all done. We sort of cleaned up the table here a little bit and I got Larry to sit over at the other edge. And uh, so we're gonna fire some questions away his way. So he's all nervous now. So don't be surprised if he's, you know, <laughs> shaking a little bit. <laughs> so here we go. All right, Larry. <laughs> All righty, here we go, Larry. So uh, how many years have you been driving, Larry? It's 21 years. 21 years, yeah? As in December 15th. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's that's a long time. Sometimes I think it's too long. <laughs> <laughs> so, Larry, what kind of tips would you have for uh, drivers out there that want to get into the trucking industry and stuff like that? Like, what would they be... You know what kind of stuff would they be looking for or what what are they you know getting themselves into if they're getting into the trucking industry well before you uh, make up your mind where you want to go as far as the trucking industry because there's several different i mean if you're brand new there's different scenarios in trucking you have the tanker the flatbed reefer dry van the portable parking lots the car haulers uh, heavy haul um, but there's so many different scenarios in trucking mm -hmm. and you have to know what part of trucking do you want to get into. Yeah, and there's livestock. There's livestock. Yeah. There's so many different scenarios in trucking. Uh, but you want to have your mind made up uh, what part of trucking do you want to get into. And uh, I think I put up a video called Do Your Homework. Yeah, you gotta I do remember your homework. that. You remember yeah. that. Um, today, uh, it's not impossible. Just about every trucking company out there has a website of some sort. And you can go in there and pick any company, Schneider, Swift, um, Knight, um, probably the same com company that Rudy works for. Yep, they all have a web. Yep, they all have a website. So you can now go to a website and you can check out the company there's another website I'm trying to remember what it's called um, yeah, I think they have the FMCSA website where you can actually check uh, uh, companies uh, scores too right yep you can check their scores there's another website and I can't think what it is uh, uh, truck trucker truth truckertruth.com truckertruth.com okay, okay. I've never even heard of that that's what it's called and it has just about every company that you can imagine yeah um, and uh, you can actually click on to that company on that page you're on video I hope you know that <laughs> oh well sorry guys <laughs> that was the waitress by the way <laughs> But uh, yeah, uh, truth, uh, truckingtruth.com has got all the trucking industries that is actually on that page. And you can click onto any page and you can find out anything about uh, trucking yeah. or about that company. Yeah. But do your homework. And, uh, and I've also heard when, uh, when I got my, into my training and stuff like that is uh, what a lot of new drivers forget is that they have the trailer behind them. So that, that's what we saw, see a lot of pictures on the internet where people are running over curves and stuff like that so that's I think a very important thing too to well, keep, that's, in, keep that's, an eye right yeah that's part of training I mean yeah. if you're if you're a veteran driver and you're still putting it comes your, natural with you yeah it comes natural but if you're still putting your trailer in a ditch after 20 years of driving then yeah that's not good yeah but, uh, yeah the, the trucking industry is uh, it's, it's a big uh, it's a big industry yeah, it definitely it is. is it, yeah. It's really rated the number one biggest industry in the United States and Canada. Yes, and I, I read, uh, or I even heard on, on Sirius Radio, I even heard it on there that they did a study on uh, what the uh, uh, number one most de-appreciated uh, job was, and I heard that truck drivers are the most guys that are de-appreciated, de they're, they're not appreciated. I don't know why they, they say that. You, you know, 
people's asked me uh, why when I was driving and uh, why don't I have a CB in my truck and the number one reason why I don't have a CB or don't like having a CB in my truck is I, I don't like the slandering I don't like drivers slandering other mm -hmm. drivers yeah uh, we are actually our worst enemy yeah when yeah. it comes to I mean we're professionals and we're supposed to present ourselves as a professional and uh, in today's trucking industry and this is my belief yeah. really, but in, in the trucking industry today it's a doggy dog world yeah and, uh, it's, uh, and I've, I've seen this a lot of times too where uh, especially with guys uh, if they see a woman driver out there they, they're getting on their CB and they're you know, doing all kinds of stupid stuff, and I think that's wrong. I, yeah, because uh, women are the biggest. Uh, I mean, we have women truck drivers out here, and uh, my head is off to uh, yeah. every woman that's out there. Uh, yeah, because I think driving. they're just as, as good drivers, or if not better, and, and hardworking people as, as the guys are. They are. Um, but I think uh, we are our worst enemies. I mean, mm -hmm. we. we uh, we fight amongst each other. You can't really, out of five drivers, you can't get one or two to agree on yeah, anything. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, it's, the driver, the driver looks out for himself. There ain't really any more of this um, uh, pull over and help the other driver out if yeah. he needs help. Uh, yeah. I remember one time I used up and, and I had a, got a DOT inspection. It was a level one inspection. Mm -hmm. And I passed my inspection, but my fire extinguisher was empty. And the reason why it was empty, there was a truck that had a trailer fire. Okay. And so there were three or four different drivers that were actually pulling over trying to help this driver out. Well, they were using up their fire extinguishers. Well, I ran to, to the truck. I grabbed my fire extinguisher. And, okay. I, and you know to get this fire out and uh, we got the fire out uh, we saved the truck is in the trailer but also for in, in snow conditions what kind of tips would you uh, have for for new drivers and stuff like that to uh... you gotta drive with the condition if it's slick slow down if it's icy park it if it's snow slow down I would also like to add to that is also a lot of drivers they uh, they leave their engine brake on and they also drive with cruise control i've seen this many times and i would also like to add that 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 is actually a dangerous situation that's a no-no yeah um, you don't and, have your uh, and that, air, you know. that's not just for snow that's even if it's a hard rain because you can hide hydroplane yes uh so you don't want to drive with the cruise on and uh, definitely shut off the jake because even though you're not personally pressing down on your brake pedal you have a jake brake that is designed to, to slow, slow down, down the truck yeah. so um, it is the rule usually the trailer will connect the brake before the truck always yeah, yeah. it's designed that way so if your truck or your trailer uh, happens to grab the ice it's going to come around and slap you yeah um, now and then also i would like to add is, is don't follow other guys too close like i uh, I uh, I went to when I had my or, uh, orientation at Penners. We actually have a five-day orientation, yep. and we actually went through an extreme weather condition course. And they also trained us over there is to uh, at least stay three truck lengths behind other vehicles. It's eight second. Yeah. It's it's a set. It's eight second following rule. Yeah, that's what it is. You're yeah. supposed to be eight seconds behind the vehicle yeah. that you're behind. Yeah, you're so, supposed to. Yeah. Um, we did what you call a Smith system. Okay. Uh, over at night, and I've done it before with JB and and a couple other companies. And what the Smith system is about is really aiming high, uh, get your 15 second eye lead in front of you. Uh, make sure you can see 15 seconds ahead. If you're only looking past your hood and no further, then that's where 90 percent of your action is. Yep. Um, you see a lot of this going down the road. Yeah, and, uh, that ain't that ain't. Do no not good. tax and drive. That's, yeah. that is yeah, that is a big dangerous. Big no -no. Uh, it's no different than if, if you know they actually consider uh, taxing uh, the same as uh, being drunk. Yeah, yeah, I would believe that too. Yeah, and I also even see a lot of drivers holding their phone uh, 
talking on the phone, like holding on their on the phone, you know, holding the to their head and, and talking, and and that's a big no-no either. Like you yeah. gotta have a Bluetooth, and they're so inexpensive these days that uh, you know, I mean, uh, you can get them for under a hundred bucks and pretty good Bluetooth system. You can. Yeah. Uh, my Blue Parrot was a hundred and nine and change, but it had a twenty dollar uh, rebate. Mm -hmm. And I got my twenty dollars back. For me, unfortunately, I couldn't get that here in the states because I got a Canadian address. But in Canada, everything is more money. Like in Canada, a Bluetooth that costs a hundred dollars up here might be a hundred and twenty up well, in Canada. Well, Rudy, the <laughs> next time you uh, you get a rebate like that and you have no place for it to go, just send it to me, and by doggy, we'll get it sent. To you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's it's, it's nice. Uh, but uh, yeah, use your headset, you know, because yeah. um, if you got a yeah. distracting driving is, is this is for any driver, but especially you new drivers out there. You know, they did a survey on teenagers mm -hmm. that just got their driver's license. And, and of course, and teenagers are the number one uh, that have the most accidents because yeah. they get uh, distracted because they're taxiing, they're talking on the phone, they're messing with their cd players or whatever yeah uh, and it's bad enough in a car but i consider a teenager uh like a new driver that's getting in a, a in a big truck mm -hmm. does that make sense you're yes. new in a big truck now remember back when you was a teenager and do you remember back when you might have been taxing a little bit or whatever you was doing when you were driving your car mm -hmm. um, now you're in something much, much bigger. So yeah. uh, it, 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 it is a proven, you, you will hurt somebody. Yeah, exactly. You can hurt somebody. Uh, and, and, and especially if you got a moose bumper. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, he's hinting on something. That thing is designed. <laughs> because the only reason why I'm saying that is I saw a Canadian. I really did. I saw a Canadian on I-75. I was in the car. I was in the car, I was on the way to Walmart, I was picking up my glasses, uh -huh. and I saw a Canadian driver, and the reason I had Ontario plate, yeah. texting, with a big moose bumper on the front. Now can you imagine if he would have hit something? Yeah. That thing designed not to really bend up, right? Yeah, yeah. That would have probably killed somebody. Yeah. But I've seen uh, US drivers texting and driving, yeah. and I lost a real good friend. A real good friend. Uh, he was my brother, not blood brother, but he was my brother. He was my friend. And, uh, around when I have nothing to do. He lost his life because he was texting. And I asked him one time, "Why do you text and drive?" Yeah. He said, "It's okay. Just don't get caught." Yeah. And he lost his life, you know. Yeah. Well, but, uh, he didn't get caught, but he got caught the other way. Yeah, he lost yeah. his life. Uh, but for any new drivers that's wanting to get started, I guess to the question that Rudy was saying, do your homework, mm -hmm. know where you're wanting to go, uh, have you went through truck driving school, yeah. if not, make sure you pick the right, pick the right truck driving school because yeah. you have to have so many hours yeah. in order for uh, a company to accept you. Yeah. Uh, but there are some free ones out there too, you got Prime, uh, Swift, um, them are really the only two I'm thinking of right now, but uh, where you can go through their school mm -hmm. and don't have to pay nothing. Okay. But you have to sign a contract. Yeah, yeah. You usually know, it's a one-year contract, right? Yeah, and you got to stay with them, and they'll pay for your own school. Okay. Yeah, um, but do your homework and uh, and take it seriously because yeah. it's not a boy's job; it's a uh, it's a man's job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I mean, here in the States, yeah, we get our winners, it gets pretty nasty, but I seen Rudy in some real, real <laughs> weather. I mean, real weather. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, you, you, you keep pretty cool and calm and collective about all this. I've, I don't think we've ever seen you crunch <laughs> up or, yeah. or, you know, we just get right through it. Yeah, well, I mean, you... Uh well, I don't know if you're getting used to it, but uh, once you you know drive in that kind of conditions for a long time, you you, 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 you don't really get I wouldn't say you really get used to it, but you you start to develop a uh, a sight for it. You can sort of tell when it is starting to get really dangerous or 
or when you start having to you know slow down and be more careful you, I call it you start to get a feel for the road you start to get the feel yeah and I know this is his interview so I'm sorry yeah. if I'm kind of throwing it's this all right. up that's all right. but you got I, your camera on too so that's yes okay. I do I got mine on it's kind of a crisscross action here yeah. uh, but I always wanted to ask Rudy this is uh, do you ever get overly confident or does it now get where you're so comfortable when you're on that stuff or do you still keep your your well I guess what I'm trying to say usually when a driver is comfortable and cool calm and collective and nothing bothers him you're in your comfort zone uh, you're no longer nervous or scared about the situation usually that's when a driver gets himself in trouble yeah. Yep. He's relaxed. He's yep. laxed. Yeah. Uh, do you, uh, when you're driving in the winter, how do you, do you still get that thing in the back of your head? Something oh, could yes. happen. And oh yes. Yeah. He's got a loose bumper, so he's probably got <laughs> more of a. And then that's where where this training uh, helps you a lot out too with. Uh, when you take uh, the extreme uh, driving course like I did at Penners, and I thank them for giving me that training. And uh, I got myself into trouble one time and uh, I learned the hard way. And we won't get into the details about that, but uh, that was a few years ago. And, uh, and uh, you know, then I took the extreme driving course and, and I, learned, I learned a lot, you know. And, uh, you know, that's why I was saying, you know, keep your distance. Get get a feel for the for the road and uh, and most of the times you will be okay you know and yep. and if you uh, like if you watch my uh, my channel uh, a while back ago I was in Quebec and don't be scared to stop stop your truck be safe out there you know yeah and and yep. that's and I I think I think the most most of that is you have to use common sense uh, to realize when it is a point when it comes to a point where yep. it is no longer safe to be out there you know. There's a fine line in trucking. Yeah. And once you cross that line, yeah. Then you you can't get, go yeah. back. Then you're going to get yourself into trouble, right? That's exactly right. Mm. The difference between a professional truck driver and somebody who just drives a car going to the store, going to a job, you know when to call mercy. You know, yeah. okay, I can't go no further. Yeah. I have to stop. Uh, the freight's not worth losing your life yeah. or somebody else's. They're still going to get their freight. They may not get it. To say they want it this afternoon. They may not get it till tomorrow morning. Or sometimes even the next day. Or yeah. sometimes the next day. Yeah. But they're certainly not going to get it if you flip that truck and you got it spread all over the road. All yeah. over the road. Yeah. So it's you got to. There's a little saying in trucking that when you're in that driver's seat, you are the captain of your ship. Yep. And that, that truck is no different than a, a, a jumbo jet or a cruise liner mm -hmm. or, or a train uh, because uh, you are held at a higher standard and you are considered a professional. And that's why when there's an accident and it, a big truck is involved, they are going to micro, micro you. I mean, they're going to look at your log books. They're going to look at your bills of lading. They're going to even go as far back as look at all your fuel stops. They're going to check you out. And, and I also know this from a friend of mine uh, that has a, <laughs> a, a police friend. They actually also go into your personal record if you have an accident and, and, and maybe a death was caused they will go into your personal and see when your credit card was used to match that up. It's they will. Yeah. They're going to take everything. Yeah. And I hate to say this, but there are ambulance chasers out there. And, and they know, the public knows, they're not stupid. They know yeah. we're held at a higher standard. Yeah. And, uh, and, I mean, you're driving down a road, you're on a two-lane road, and you're at a particular spot, and you know you're not supposed to be there. And you're actually marking your book, and I'm saying this, but you're actually marking your book that you're in a sleeper, thinking it's okay to drive 20 miles because that's as far as you got to go. Yeah. But if a drunk driver hits you, and I'm not saying the drunk ain't going to get in trouble for 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 being there too, but they're going to check you out. Oh yeah. And what you know, I heard a story a long time ago already, and this is always in my back of my head. And this is always what I tell my friends. I know a few of my friends that cheat on their logbook, and this is what I tell them all the time. There was a case uh, uh, years ago 
where a, uh, a, a, a semi-tractor guy, the driver, cheated on his logbook. He went to 60 miles too far and he did that on purpose because he wanted to get there but he marked his logbook wrong. He was stopped at a rest area. He was sleeping in his sleeper at night and a drunk driver came and hit him in the back and was killed. Well, guess what? That driver is sitting in jail today because he, he was shouldn't have been there. He shouldn't have been there. And that's always in the back of my mind. Yep, he shouldn't have been there. Yeah, and then that's that's what I keep keep in the back of my mind. That's what I tell my friends too. If you want to cheat, that could very well be happening to you. And I wouldn't I wouldn't want to spend the rest of my life behind bars. Right. You know. And if you're going to work for somebody who is really insisting that you have to cheat your book. Get, old. get away. Yeah, get away. You know, it, it's nothing personal. It's a job. Yeah. Uh, you got to think of it this way. If you had a factory job, yeah. if you worked in a factory, are you going to be there for eight hours that you're required, or are you going to try to stay there for 14, 15 hours? I mean, come on. When it's 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, it's time to go home. You're going home. Yeah. So when you're in your big truck driving, why would you want to drive 20 hours a day? Yeah. It's no different. Yeah. You know, why would you want to, even though you're in your truck, you got to go to the truck stop and you got to take a break and you're considering yourself, I'm still at work. Yeah, yeah, you're still at work. But you can eat, you can shower, you can relax, you can whatever you got to do. Yeah. But uh, now I think Canada is the same as us at what, 14? No. You we guys are have different. different. You yes. are different. Yes, we are different. We, uh, we are allowed to uh, drive 13 hours a day. In Canada still be allowed to be on duty for 14 hours but we are allowed to do that within a 16 hour period and we are also not required to uh, take a 30 minute break and we are also allowed to take a reset anytime when we want which they have recently changed they changed United. it here in yes, the US too. but uh, we are also allowed to uh, drive 70 hours in seven days not 70 hours in eight days like here in the States so we get more days yeah for the 70 hour rule. Yeah. Now we have to take it, even though uh, it's 34 hour break, now you have to take a 36, 36 hour break. Yeah. 36 hour break. Yeah. Um, now our rules are, you have to drive, it's 11 hour drive, it's a 14 hour day, 70 hours in eight days. Uh, we have to take a mandatory 30 minute break. For yeah. some reason the government thinks we need to stop our trucks for 30 minutes. Which I don't have a problem with, you know, because then I get to meet with Larry here and have breakfast. And <laughs> yes, um, Rudy is actually on his way to Virginia, Washington, Virginia. Yeah. And uh, I was supposed to have been here before he, but um, I'm driving a four-wheeler that don't have no weight in the in, in, in the bed. It's a pickup truck. Yeah. I'm just sliding all over getting here. But... Uh, and I know, you know, I know I got a lot of time on my camera, but I don't care. This is a special <laughs> moment, so. Yeah, yeah. Definitely a special Same here. moment. Well, any of this, Larry, would you like to have, uh, say anything before we wrap, wrap her up? I just want to say it's been more than a pleasure uh, meeting Trucker Rudy. I follow Trucker Rudy. Uh, I, I think I said it in one of my other videos that, you know, there's 100,000 videos on YouTube. And uh, you can get what you call a makeup job where we're okay, it's going to be a bunch of fans. But if you want the truth about trucking, if you really want to know what trucking is all about, and you don't want no Hollywood stunt or you don't want watch Trucker Rudy. And I mean that, I mean that because um, you're getting uh, education from both sides of the fences. You're getting education of how Canada and their roads and they're winners and they're and, and and you're also getting it here in the u.s and uh and your border crossing video that he made i thought that was great you know because but uh we love you rudy well thank you i'm man. not just saying it the trucker jukebox is nothing but the truth i mean if, I, yeah. if i'm going to sit here and lie to you i'm not going to i'm not even going to talk yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's about the truth yeah. and uh i'm i'm nothing fancy i'm just i'm five foot six i got a squeaky voice and i love trucking <laughs> Well, it goes the same for you, uh, Larry. I, I call you Larry, but <laughs> my name my name is Larry. I go by Trucker Jukebox on my YouTube yeah, channel, yeah, but my yeah. name is Larry. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was definitely a pleasure meeting up with you, Larry. Uh, love to love to have breakfast here with you, and uh, certainly enjoyed our time together. It was it was a pleasure talking to you and 
finally get to meet up with you. We, I know we haven't known each other for very long. This is actually the first time we met. It is. It was great. It definitely. It is. <laughs> it was. It was a great, great pleasure meeting you. And uh, I guess we will go outside and we'll probably do a little bit video videoing out there, and then we'll have to say goodbye. <laughs> That's all right. Hey, Rudy. It was a pleasure, oh, my friend. It, it really was, was. It was the same for me, man. Yeah, I guess this is going to be hard to say goodbye, I guess, but we have to say goodbye now, I think. Rudy's got a place to be. Yeah. I yeah. don't. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah. So Larry will probably put his video up today, which is March 1st. And as you guys know, my video is probably going yeah, we'll, to be yeah. probably going to be a week behind, but we'll, we'll see what we can work out. But anyways, Larry, we... Uh, this is a, a USA driver shaking the hand of a Canadian driver. <laughs> Any yeah. US driver. Yeah. So thanks for meeting up with me. It's uh, a it was, pleasure. It was a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Yeah. And uh, I, I'm going to put uh, Rudy's link again. It's, it's in down in my description box. You guys can follow him. He's a good YouTuber. <laughs> All right. We'll see you in a bit. Well, here we go. We are going to go back on the road here. And Larry is just standing over here at the truck stop and he is going to go filling me going by here. So we're going to go to the air horn a little bit and have some fun and say goodbye to him. And uh, he's filming me while I'm going by here and uh, he's going to send that clip to me later on. And uh, we will make uh, a little bit of a video with that and we'll see what we can do with it. Well, anyways, the roads are a little bit slick, but certainly is uh, is uh, nice to see Larry. I, I certainly had a great time with him. I loved it, and uh, I hope you guys enjoy his videos too. I certainly do. And uh, next week, he says he's going to get himself a new job, and. And then we will see him go on the road again so we are certainly looking forward to that but anyways let's get going here put the hammer down and get to where we gotta go well here we are in Pennsylvania on I-70 Turnpike and we are gonna go through a tunnel yeah so look at that here we go, we are going into the tunnel. You yeah, probably won't be seeing a whole lot of uh, road video today. And the reason why I won't be filming a whole lot of road videos is because I had that interview with Trucker Jukebox. And so that will make it a lengthy video already. So I'm going to try and keep it short. And then we'll be doing road videos probably again tomorrow. We'll see anyways. So we'll see what kind of road videos we will be doing tomorrow. But uh, yeah, so we are going to a tunnel. Going to a mountain right now. Yes, sir. It's actually nice not to have the wipers on constantly. It's been snowing as really wet snow for the last couple of hours. Constantly had to have, use my wipers. Uh, it's starting to get annoying, you know. But we are just about through the tunnel, and it almost looks like there's another tunnel just up ahead. But we'll see. I know there's a few tunnels up here. I gone through, gone through here before. Yep. Here we go. We're out of the tunnel. Yeah. Oh, we gotta turn on the wipers again. Look at that. Uh, luckily, the roads are good though. The roads aren't uh, slippery yet. They're just wet. They're not slippery at all. But anyways, we'll continue our, uh, with our journey. I just thought these sceneries are just unbelievable. Speed warning. I, I don't know, but yeah, look at that. You're going way too fast. Even my GPS is screaming at me. Speed warning. And you're going way faster. Oh well, I just thought these sceneries are pretty cool. Going through these mountains up here in Pennsylvania. 
So I just figured I would show these mountains up here. So I know some of you guys, they love to see mountains and stuff like that. So a little bit of a pullover area. What the heck, that Schneider, he pulled that far back that his trailer axle, that his trailer axle, the, 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 la the last one there, was basically hanging in the air there. He's, he's gone in almost into the ditch. What the heck, you know? Some drivers, they don't use their brain. And that's why we get a bad reputation sometimes, you know? We are in Breezy Wood, Pennsylvania. Yeah. We got to take this exit here. We want to continue on uh, I-70. So uh, here we are. We just stopped at the uh, TA up here in Breezy Wood. I just had to go clean my uh, my lights and my mirrors. I could barely even see anything in out of my window here anymore and see anything in my mirror. So, like I said, it's been snowing for the last couple of hours. I've been driving in wet stuff here for a while. So, then my mirrors get all fucked up and my uh, windows here, even on the side, like I can barely see out of the window. So. Since I'm gonna be driving a little bit further yet, I got to clean that up, so we did. Now we're gonna put the hammer down. We got about 120 miles to go to where I deliver tomorrow morning. And then we will see what we get from there, I guess. But in the meantime, I think I got about another hour I can go before I, uh, I think that's the pretty much the last truck stop there is before, uh, for my delivery place well guys today is probably going to be a little bit of a longer video or it has been a little bit of a longer video but uh, it was especially a uh, special day for me I got to meet a very popular youtuber and uh, it was definitely nice to meet up with him and uh, we had I think we had some great conversations so I hope you guys liked it too. If you did, give me a thumbs up, share the video, hit that subscribe button, and we will see you again tomorrow at 5 a.m. So thanks for watching.